Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at this 12 volt, 105 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Roy Pow. Roy Pow is a fairly recent company owned by Eve that had gained some traction over the past few years with their line of golf cart batteries. They generously sent this battery out to me for review and testing. The plan for today will be a general overview of this battery. We'll do some capacity testing at a 0.2C and a 1C rate, compare the two numbers, and then we'll see if we can open it up and take a look at what's inside and how it's put together. This battery measures 18.9 inches long, 6.9 inches deep, and it is 7.3 inches in height. And it weighs in at 24.2 pounds or 11 kilograms. Taking a look at the top here, we can see the nominal voltage is 12.8 volts. It is rated for 105 amp hours or 1,344 watt hours. We have the positive post on the left and the negative post on the right. And that screw consists of a lock washer and a flat washer, which are affixed to the bolt. They don't actually come off. One of the more interesting features I had noticed of this battery is this port on the top left corner. So basically over here we have a power button which we can turn on and this just shows us the state of charge of the battery. It's currently at 100% charge. I had charged this last night in preparation for today's testing. But this port is a round threaded connector with four pins in the center and they refer to this as an aviations port. I'm not sure what the technical connector name is but it looks almost identical to the uh, microphone jack on some of my CB radios that I use which is interesting. They told me this is for plugging in an external battery level monitor, which is an accessory that can be purchased separately. It's a nice feature that would provide a panel mount display since most people don't mount their batteries in a clearly visible location. They're usually like under a hood or in a trunk or somewhere like that. Now they did say they could sell that on request. However, I didn't see it for sale anywhere on their website or on Amazon that I could find. So here's the information guide that came with the battery. Again, just the specifications on the front here. And the second page here, we have the parameters. Again, 12.8 volts nominal. The minimum capacity is rated for 104.5 amp hours or greater. The standard charge is 45 amps. Max charge volt is 14.6 volts, which comes out to 3.65 volts per cell. And they also have the operating temperatures laid out here. You can charge it between 0 to 45 degrees Celsius. You can discharge it from negative 4 to 131 Fahrenheit. However, it also says 0 to 45 degrees Celsius, and negative 4 Fahrenheit is not 0 Celsius, so I'm not sure. Since you can usually discharge lithium iron phosphate below freezing point, I assume this negative 4 Fahrenheit uh, here is correct, and this 0 Celsius was a misprint. But we are going to test this 0 Celsius uh, charge cutoff because it is supposed to have thermal protection at the low end as well. And then the overcharge protection rate varies depending on the current temperature of the battery. All right, so we're going to connect up our cabling for the capacity testing here. And I've got a standard Anderson connector I've been using for these capacity tests. I do wish there was a little more mass to these studs up here, uh, because if you're pushing 100 amps, this doesn't really seem like a lot of surface area, but maybe it's fine. Additionally, it would have been nice if the washer was a little bit larger here, because you can see the diameter of the uh, hole on this lug, and this is a fairly standard size. The washer does cover it, but it, it would have been nice if the washer was a little bit larger. I did not see any torque specifications mentioned anywhere, so I'm just going to tighten it down hand tight because I don't want to strip anything out. All right, so here's my standard setup for capacity testing batteries. We have the positive that comes off, goes through this connector, and goes directly into the inverter. We have the negative that comes off, enters a batrium shunt, exits the shunt, and goes into the circuit breaker. This is a 125 amp circuit breaker. Additionally, we have a small lead coming off the positive, which goes into the shunt as the voltage sense wire for the shunt. This shunt goes over to a Batrium Watchmon 5, which is transmitting data wirelessly to this Android display over here. Now, in order to put a 0.2C load on this battery, we need 21 amps, which comes out to 268 watts. And we can see the idle consumption of the inverter on the left here. It's idling at 1.39 amps. So I just have an array of incandescent light bulbs I'm going to plug in that should be right around 268 watts, I'm hoping. So we're at 267 watts. That's almost, that's almost perfect, actually. All right, guys, we're starting to approach the 100 amp hour mark. We're currently sitting at 94.22 amp hours, and the voltage is still at a healthy 12.36 volts. I don't anticipate having any problems at all hitting the 105 amp hour mark. All right, we're getting close. I'm expecting this to shut off at any moment now. You can see the voltage is dropping fairly fast. We're at 10.24 volts and 101.48 amp hours. Yep, and there we go. 
So the final tally is 101.82 amp hours. Let's make sure that's the most recent figure because this shunt only reports that every 60 seconds, I believe. All right, and there it just updated. So 102.02 amp hours. We're three amp hours off of what was advertised. I don't know what it is about these tests I'd be doing that they're just a couple of amp hours short each time, but uh, but sir, I certainly don't think that's a problem at all. It could be a balancing issue. Maybe the battery has to balance a little more. Maybe my charger was cutting out a bit too early. So next I'm going to charge this battery back up to full and we're going to do the same test over again, but I'm going to try to put a 1C load on it, which is around 100 amps. All right, so charging with my eye charger here, I got 100.11 amp hours charged in before the BMS on this battery shut it off. So I'm going to start this once more just to make sure it's fully charged up. All right, so we're ready to begin the high rate discharge test. I have a space heater plugged in here for a secondary load. So I'm hoping the combination between the space heater and the lights I had ran previously will push this close to a 100 amp rate. We'll see. All right, that puts us very close to 100 amps. We're at 96.33 amps currently, and it's still climbing just a hair, but I expect it to rest around there for most of the duration of this test. All right, the voltage is dropping quickly. We're nearing the end of our test, and I'm anticipating this shutting off at any moment now. We're at 10.48 volts and 93.5 up oh, and there it goes and the final capacity is 97.01 amp hours under a near 100 amp load it was about what 97 amps or so all right so now we're ready for the fun part we want to take a look and see what is inside this battery now most batteries are sealed and you actually have to cut them open along the seam luckily it looks like this one is screwed together because if i pop out these little covers here there are Phillips screws underneath, so I'm hoping all I have to do is remove those and it's not glued in addition to those screws. Now that I got the screws removed, the cover is fairly loose, so it's just... It should go without saying, too, that you are not uh, supposed to open these. The manufacturer actually suggests that you don't because you can and will void your warranty if you tinker around with this. So it looks like down in there, these are uh, prismatic cells. These are aluminum case prismatic cells. And I'm going to guess without looking that these are probably Eve brand, considering Eve owns this company. And it looks like there are four wires that come off of each one. So there's two bundled pairs here, and each bundled pair consists of two individual wires. And these are 8 gauge 200 degree silicone cables. And I can see all four of these go down to the positive post of this battery pack. Now what I find most interesting here is the positive post had a longer screw. It's a different type, it's actually an Allen head uh, screw. And the negative side had a Phillips screw. So I'm not sure why the difference there for the same terminal, just one's negative and one's positive. All right, all this stuff appears to be glued in pretty well, so I don't think I'm going to be able to pull any of it out, but uh, it's all fairly standard here. So these are the balance leads that go to each connection, each series connection on the battery pack. Uh, this four conductor cable is going out to the uh, aviation port on the top of the battery pack and if you look down in here you can see the large heat sink for the MOSFETs that control the charging and the discharging. You can see there are two silicone cables like I said going in and they crimp they are crimped onto one lug here and then that lug has two spots so there are four cables total two on one lug and two on the other lug that both go to the positive end of this battery. So if you look down in here you can see the series connections between the pairs of cells it's fairly thick metal. I'm not sure what it is, but it almost looks like lead. Because if I scrape my screwdriver across it, it digs in pretty easily, and I don't think it's aluminum. So, regardless of what it is, it appears to be laser welded onto the top of the cells. And there's a hump in the middle to allow for expansion and contraction as the cells, uh, you know, grow out to avoid putting stress on the terminals themselves. I'd really like to pull these cells out to see what they are, but everything is glued in very well down there with this black, uh, I don't know if it's just silicone, it's the same stuff that's up along the top here. All right, so I got this battery put back together here. And the last thing I wanna do with it is make sure the low temperature disconnect prevents charging below freezing. So I got 12.85 volts, that's perfect. I'm going to stick this in the freezer overnight and we'll check tomorrow morning, see if we have voltage and see if it allows me to charge it. All right, so we are at 19 degrees below zero in the freezer. All 
All right, guys, so here we are. This is the moment of truth, whether or not this will prevent charging below freezing. So I've got my iCharger X6 connected here. You can see it's reading 12.37 volts, which is fine. I would not expect the discharge portion of this to be shut down since it can discharge below freezing point. So we'll go to lithium iron phosphate, charge, and it's set for 15 amps. Oh, output connection broken. So the low temperature disconnect did shut down the charging portion of this battery. And just to make sure, let's see if we can start a discharge and see if it's discharging. All right, and you can see it is discharging, which is good. So that means only the charge functionality is shut down on the BMS of this battery. So that is perfect. It is working as it is designed and as it is advertised. So in conclusion, based on these tests, I'm very happy with how this battery performed. It was three amp hours short of the advertised capacity. However, there are a variety of things that could have affected that, including my charging methods, my testing methods, and the fact that it's rather cold uh, in the garage here. I would have to look around some data sheets again, but I believe the average temperature for a proper discharge test was around 75 degrees Fahrenheit or so. I don't really have any concern about this battery. It's pretty much plug and play for any application where a traditional lead acid would be used, such as solar systems, RVs, campers, and things of that nature. One thing we haven't talked about yet is price. Uh, this battery sells for $6.99 on Amazon, um, and I will leave a link to where you can purchase it in the description of this video. That price comes out to $520 per kilowatt hour. And I do feel that's a very reasonable price point for a pre-built battery like this. Of course, you'll always be able to get them cheaper if you build them yourself, but these types of products aren't marketed towards people who are DIY and want to build their own batteries. Uh, that being said, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you have anything else you'd like me to test or you'd like to see with this battery, you can let me know that as well. If you found this interesting, please don't forget to hit that like button before you go, and thank you very much for watching.